Hello everyone, and welcome to Mr. This is Europe, and here is Belgium. Let's take a look, shall we? The ground where modern Belgium subsists has been inhabited for a long, long time. Ancient unknown men here made men here's, and no one knows why. The land later became home to a Celtic Germanic agglomeration of tribes known as the Belgae, great warriors who bravely resisted the Roman invasion led by Julius Caesar. It took Caesar seven campaigns to subdue the Belgae, whose territory then became a Roman province. Rome built roads and stone structures that still stand, and their laws and language took root in Belgium. But German tribes were an ever-present threat perched on the northern brink of the empire, and sure enough, after Western Rome fell, the German Franks and Saxons took over. France is named after the Franks, whose Merovingian dynasty got this big, and whose kings became Christian after the charity and goodness of Clotilde won over her husband Clovis, and he converted. Itinerant missionaries like Irishman St. Columbanus aided the spread of Christianity into Frankish Belgium. The Carolingian dynasty followed, whose greatest king Charlemagne may have been born in the Belgian city of Liège. Now, though nominally under French rule, the Belgian region of Flanders emerged in the Middle Ages as one of the most affluent and productive places in Europe, with a lucrative industry involving weaving wool imported from England, and trade thrived, enriching cities like Ghent, Bruges, and Ypres. This enticed the King of France to make French rule more complete in Flanders, as he was running low on cash, and the Flemings were daring to consider independence. So he sent an army led by elite knights to crush them, but they themselves ended up crushed at the Battle of the Golden Spurs by a militia of pike-wielding Flemish peasants. Naturally, the French returned for revenge, and made Flanders pay in more ways than one, yet it retained the independence it had declared. But French influence returned in 1377, when the Duke of Burgundy married Margaret of Flanders, leaving Flemish lands in Frenchmen's hands. But this was not something oppressive or loathsome. Flanders prospered, and, after more marrying, came under Habsburg rule, that Austrian family that married all over the place to get land and power. The 14 and 1500s saw Flanders bloom into a blossom of the Renaissance, with wondrous accomplishments in science, music, architecture, and so on. This was also the time of Martin Luther, whose movement led to Western Europe splitting, some remaining Catholic, others turning to Protestantism. This divide was very tangible in Belgium, where their northern neighbours, in what would later be the Netherlands, were turning away from the Church of Rome, while Belgium stayed Catholic, even though the Flemings spoke Dutch. So why the divide? Why did the Belgians stay Catholic? Well, the Habsburgs, who had Belgium, ended up ruling Spain, and Catholic Spain thus ended ended up ruling Belgium, but their grip on the Netherlands failed after the Eighty Years' War that saw Netherlands gain independence and retain the Protestantism it had previously chosen. As the Spanish Habsburg line ended, Austria regained Belgium, after a war of course, and their various reforms got Belgium growing again. But Belgians began to resent these reforms when they targeted the Catholic Church, and this led to a revolution for independence that the Austrians quashed, but then France swept in and took over. The French imposed heavy taxes and forced Belgian men to fight in Napoleon's armies. After the defeat of Napoleon, at Waterloo, which is in Belgium, this is the battlefield today, Belgium was united with the Netherlands, but the differences in culture and religion were too much, and Belgium declared independence in 1830. But as all this war and geopolitical tussling was going on, Belgium was industrializing, particularly in the French-speaking south. Let's take a quick look at Belgium. It is roughly divided into two linguistic chunks. The north bit is Flanders, Dutch-speaking, and the south, Wallonia, is French-speaking. There's a few Germans here, and Brussels, the capital, is bilingual. Okay, well, the early 1800s saw Wallonia become the first place outside Britain to progress into the Industrial Revolution. And all those factories and mills and mined coal and molten iron and steam spewing engines made a lot of wealth. Wealth means power, and power hungers always for more power, something King Leopold II had quite an appetite for. Belgium got hold of the gigantic region of the Congo in Africa, and in 1885 it became the personal possession of Leopold. And though his colonial endeavours were very costly, money began to flow in from the exported rubber, demand for which was now increasing. The forced labour conditions became brutal, with recruited African troops butchering their fellow Africans into submission, and officers above them turning a blind eye. Christian missionaries began exposing this horror to the world, and in 1908 Leopold was stripped of his ownership and the Congo was administered by Belgium's parliament. Belgium was a battlefield during World War I and suffered horribly under German occupation. The damaged economy shuddered more under the Great Depression, and then the Nazis invaded in World War II. After the war, various reforms got the Belgian economy climbing again, and it joined the European coal and steel community, involving a common market of 
ostensibly for the purpose of lessening tensions and eliminating the possibility for war in Europe. This organization has now swollen into the European Union, with its capital at Brussels, and God only knows what the future holds for this potential superpower. Linguistic and other divisions still rattle Belgium, making the EU motto rather ironic. Belgium today is one of the world's richer and better places to live, whose contributions range from great writers and scientists, to the guys who made Tintin and the Smurfs, from great sports figures and painters, to the inventor of the saxophone. But what lies ahead for this country? Comment below, but for now, bye-bye. <laughs>